Hey YouTube, I want to walk you through generating your interface designs in mid-journey and then bringing them to life in HTML and CSS. So mid-journey, if you're not familiar with it, is a way for you to generate images using a text prompt. So there's a lot of these generative image resources out there. And mid-journey is probably one of the more popular ones because it does a really great job generating beautiful imagery. So the way you use it is through this Discord channel and you simply type imagine and then write in your prompt, which can be anything. You can describe an image, but we're gonna use a user interface design. So if you specify UI UX interface design, something along those lines with popular interface websites and design websites appended to it, um, you'll get results something along the lines of this. And so I also append, it's a m much like a command line tool where you can append these queries to it. Um, so I'm setting the quality to two, stylizing it to 1000, and we're using B4 of mid journey. So that's version, the model version four, which is the latest one. Using this prompt, I was able to get this design. And so we're going to focus on this one on the right because I think it's a pretty interesting looking design. Obviously, this isn't a real website. None of the, all the text is gibberish, but we're going to see if we can actually make this into a real website. So the first thing you need to do is you need to get the image. So we download the image um, which we've got here and we're going to open that up in Photoshop. So now that we've got it up in Photoshop, let's go ahead and isolate the image we're interested in right here. Let's zoom in a bit. First, we'll duplicate the layer so we're not, so we can preserve the old version. And we want to clean up this background image. So you can see there's this header with this big, beautiful looking background image here. We want to clean this up and then grow it out. So here's what I'm going to do. Go ahead and, and use the patch tool. See that's over here. And what this allows you to do is select these areas and just drag and clean them up. See, boom, gone. So you can do this to clean up all the little specks in the space here. If we get some something we don't want, just go ahead and continue to clean that up. I'm going to do that with the rest of this text too. just so that we have a completely clean background image. And you can do big chunks as well because it's a nice gradient. It'll smooth that all out for you. So let's go ahead and do that. Everything here. Cool. Now that's looking pretty good. So what I'm going to do next is content aware fill. So what we can do here is actually take this image. I'm going to crop it down to just the image part of it. And then I'm going to do a selection. So I'm going to use the lasso tool to outline the area that I want to fill. Then I'm going to go to the menu item, edit, and select content aware fill. Normally the results are fine, so just hit apply and okay. Then I'm going to do it to the corners as well to fill those in. Now we're going to do some out painting. So I'm going to open up the stability Photoshop plugin and use Dolly 2 to apply an image edit. So let's duplicate the layer and make sure we're on image edit. Type in our prompt and click generate. So this is going to outpaint contents of our image to fill the missing alpha channel. So here's our results. We can go ahead and pick one of those and place it. You'll see it tiles perfectly with our existing image. 
So if we crop and move around our artboard here, we can outpaint a larger image. And here's an example of that. Next, we're going to use Illustrator. You can use Figma or whatever vector tool you prefer. But we're going to trace all the vector assets so that we can leverage those inside the application. So here I'm just going to recreate this button using a bunch of shapes and gradients. Um, again, kind of tracing all the other UI elements and icons within the application so we can use those within the website. So just exporting these as SVG to be included and also getting the shapes and sizes of the buttons for the UI. Next, I'm going to trace this curve that sits in front of the header image because I think it would be fun to animate this path. So we're going to use GSAP, the GreenSock animation platform, Morph SVG plugin to animate this path between different states. So after we draw this one version of it that I traced, we're going to bring it into a new document and create multiple different versions of it that you can kind of see here, which we're going to have it animate between these different versions. So you save out the SVG from Illustrator or whatever application you're using and just bring it directly into your HTML inline. So this way we can reference the different SVG paths and elements. Then inside of our JavaScript, we're going to import GSAP and some of our plugins like Smooth Scroller so we get some nice easing on our scroll and our timeline animation that we're going to use for our Morph SVG plugin. So here we're just setting the path and then setting the different paths that we want this to transition between. And we're creating a timeline that loops back and forth with a yo-yo effect indefinitely. The rest of it's mostly just layout styling, um, using things like Flexbox and specifically Grid in this case for that table content section. And here you can see the end result. So we've got this nice easing on our scroll. We've got all the UI elements and our nice little animation of our curve on top of our header image. You'll notice there's also a slight delay with parallax on some of these elements. And that's another feature of the scroll smoother plugin for GSAP where you can add data attributes to them that adjust this value. So that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for checking it out.